Mac fans, today we are looking at using the PyCharm IDE, hooking it in to our ArcGIS Pro ArcPy library and doing some GO processing with Python. I've installed PyCharm Community Edition, which is a straightforward process. You can just go to the PyCharm website and see how to install that. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a new project. So if I just click there, and PyCharm is going to ask me what I would like to call this project. And I'm going to go with my first project. And when I hit create, PyCharm is going to start setting up our environment. This is a nice thing about using PyCharm IDE. Um, every time you start a new project, it will create a new virtual environment, which means that any libraries installed or any updates, anything like that, are only going to affect this particular project. Once everything is set up, we are going to close the tips. They're very good, but let's just close it for now. And the next thing that we need to do is tell PyCharm which Python interpreter we're going to use. So if I go up to File and go to Settings, and then I go to Project, My First Project, and then to the Project Interpreter. You can see up here at the moment we're using Python 2.7 and that's where the Python EXE is located. So instead of that interpreter, what we are going to do is hit the settings button and I'm going to add a new one. And this will bring up the ability to browse through. And what I want to use is a system interpreter. So I'll click on that. And again, you can see that we have got a system interpreter here. Currently, it's looking at ArcGIS 10.6, but we actually want to connect it to Arc Pro. Now, depending on your installation of ArcGIS Pro, you might not know where your Python path is. So I've got ArcGIS Pro open in the background. I've got the Python window open. So you just go to View and Python, and I'm going to import sys, and I'll type print sys.exec prefix and that will give us the location of where our Python EX is for ArcGIS Pro. So I'm just going to copy that. Then I'm going to go over to PyCharm and I'm going to use this browse function for our system interpreter and I'm going to paste that in there. And here we can see we're in ArcGIS Pro, we've got the Py3, and if we scroll down, I'll select the Python EXE, OK that, and then OK that. And it's going to take a little time just to set things up for us. So we've switched from using Python 2.7, and we're hooked in to the actual Python installation for ArcGIS Pro. And here you can see all the packages that are installed and the various versions. Now that we have PyCharm set up, why don't we try writing a very basic script? So I'll just go up to my first project and right click. And I'm going to go for a new Python file. I'm going to call this basic script. And I'll OK that. And you can see that our basic script.py is automatically in our My First Project folder. So what should we do in here? I'm just going to leave a comment to begin with and just put me as the author of this very groundbreaking script. And then all we're going to do with this is print the usual standard Hello, map fans. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. That is my script. And then we can run it. So if we just right click up here on our basic script and hit run, you can also do Control Shift F10 to do this. And here we can see it's printed Hello, map fans. And the process is finished with exit code zero which means that everything was good. Exit code zero is a very good thing to see. 
So that's pretty cool. We have written our first script. Well done. So with PyCharm set up and talking to our ArcGIS Pro Python interpreter, now we can do some fun stuff with GIS. And here I've got a pre-baked map. It's of Wakefield, home of the Hepworth Art Gallery. And I've used Ordnance Survey's Open Zoom stack and chopped out a piece of the railway line here. So that's what's in red. If you'd like to know more about OS Open Zoom stack, please take a look at my other video. So with this railway line, what we're hoping to do is to use Python and we're going to put a buffer around it. Now, if you're using Python and processing tools, it's very useful to have a look at the tool to begin with. So if we go to analysis and go to tools, you should see in the favorites, you've got the buffer analysis tool. So I'm just going to click on that. And up in the top right, we have got a help option. So if I hang over this, it's going to show me some nice pictures of what the buffer tool will do. And if I click on that, it will launch the buffer help. And so this takes us right into the Arc GIS Pro docs. And you can scroll down and see how the buffer works, etc. And you will notice if we keep going that we have a syntax down here. So to call the tool, we use buffer analysis and then these particular arguments are required. So we're always going to have to include in features, an out feature class, the buffer distance or field, and all the Arguments in the curly braces are optional, so we can include those or not include those. Uh, if we keep scrolling down, we can see some code samples, which is quite useful. So this will give us clues as to how we can write our own code. And down here, we've got environments as well. So various different environments that we can set for this particular tool. And one of these is current workspace. So that's going to specify the location of the input data set and the output data set. And we're going to set that up in the next step. One of the most important things when you're coding is to read the docs. So before we set up our workspace, I am going to have a look at the workspace property in ArcGIS Pro Help. So if you go into a browser and just type proArcGIS.com. And that will take us to the help for ArcGIS Pro. And in the search, I'm just going to type in env and hit enter. The first result looks like this, env in ArcPy classes. And if we click on that, here we are in the env part of the help. And you can see that these are all the environment settings. So we've got various different properties, the explanation and what data type it expects. If we scroll right down to the bottom, you will find a workspace. And this is tools that on a current workspace environment setting use the workspace specified as the default location for geoprocessing tool inputs and outputs. And that's what we want. So let's click on the current workspace to learn more about it. And that will take us to the current workspace environment setting. And the most important bit down here, I mean, you can read all the rest of it in your own time, but we've got the scripting syntax. So in order to set this, we're going to type in arcpy.env.workspace and it equals, and then we're going to give it a string, which will be a path. And down here, you can see a script example. So arcpy.env.workspace equals, and then give it a path. So let's do that. We're back in PyCharm now, and instead of print hello Mac fans, which was our first basic script, I'm back in the basic script module, and I'm going to first of all import ArcPy. ArcPy is the ArcGIS Python library, and that's what we'll be using in order to access all the ArcGIS functions. So we've got import ArcPy there. And then I am also going to write arcpy.env.workspace. And that is going to equal, and we're going to put an R and then some inverted commas. 
Now the small r will treat the contents of the speech marks as a raw string. So any backslashes will be treated as single backslashes and not special escape characters. So that means that working on a Windows machine we're absolutely fine. And now we can add the pathway to this particular property. Our workspace is going to be the location of our geo database associated with this project. Art Pro provides a real easy way to find the path for that GDB so we don't have to faff around. And if I go up to the map tab, I can just click on copy path in the clipboard section. And that actually copies the path of my workspace, which is super useful. So if I go back into PyCharm now, I can go into my inverted commas and just click or type control V. And there you can see we have copied the path and we have set our workspace. And I'm just going to put in a print statement to print this and we're just going to run that. So this should print our path. And there's the path to our workspace. So excellent, that is working. Now what we'd like to do is to buffer that railway line. This is just an arbitrary task, but it might be one that you need to do in the future. So let's start by typing arcpy and then do a dot and we'll go to buff. And you can see that it brings up all the options that start with buf, all that contain buf. And I'm gonna go for buffer analysis. That is what we'd like to use. And then I'll put the parentheses at the end. And you'll notice that we've got uh, some tool IntelliSense here. So it asks for in features and it also wants out features, buffer distance or field. And then it gives you all the various arguments you can use. Now, what we'd like to include in this is the name of our railway line. So what that feature class is called. And we can check that by going back here. And it's called Westgate Rail. So in PyCharm, I'm going to put the in feature as Westgate Rail. And then I'm going to add a comma. And for the output feature class, I'm going to call it Buff Rail 100. We also need to add a buffer distance or a field. And for that, I'm going to set it to 100. That's going to be a 100 meter buffer around our railway line. And your code should look a little bit like this. I'm just going to put in some white space after that and after that. So that's looking all right. Now we're going to try running our script. Fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Our process is finished with exit code zero and let's not forget zero is good. So that's run and let's have a think about what we've done. We set our workspace, we've used an ArcPy buffer and we've asked it to use Westgate rail as the input and we want an output called buff rail and the buffer to be 100. Let's have a look and see what's happened in Arc Pro. Nothing at the moment. But if we have a look at our Wakefield GDB, we can see that we have a new layer and it's called Buff Rail 100. So let's add this to our map. And look at that. We have our buffer done. So we're actually, instead of using the GUI, we're just writing code and that is creating new layers for us using PyCharm IDE. Pretty neat. Now, if we take a closer look at our rail buffer, you can see that this looks like a multi-part line and for every part, we have a new buffer. So this isn't looking too nice, but if we have a look at our buffer tool, if I go up to analysis, go to the tools, buffer, and I go to the help, don't forget to check the docs. This is where you can find the answers to most of your questions. And if we go down to the syntax, we've got the buffer analysis. We included in features, that was Westgate rail. Out feature class was buff 100 or buff rail 100. And our distance was 100. 
Now what we'd like to do is dissolve those buffers so that it's one continuous buffer. And here we have a dissolve option. So it's in curly braces because we don't have to include it, but if we'd like to, we can, so it's optional. And if I go down to dissolve option, you can see that it's optional. And if we include dissolve option, we can have the, any of the three. So we could have none, individual buffer around each feature, and that's the default. So that's what we've got at the moment. We could use all, and all the buffers are dissolved together. Or we could list and any buffers showing attribute values in the listed fields. So I'd like to dissolve all the buffers. Let's see if we can change our code and do that. So we've got our input as Westgate rail. I'm going to call this buff rail 100 and give it a D for dissolve. And then let's have a quick look again at the syntax. So dissolve option, dissolve option equals, and the value that we wanted to give the dissolve option is all. I'll call that all. And let's give this a run and see what happens. Now what we'd expect is that we get another new output and that'll be called buff rail 100D. Still gonna be 100 and it's gonna have dissolved buffers. So fingers crossed, map fans, let's see what happens here. I can hear it running in the background or maybe that's just my computer fans. But it's finished and we've got the exit code of zero. Excellent, let's go in here. And for our GDB, we can just refresh this. And now we've got buff rail 100D. So I'll drag that across into my map. There's the D. And if I turn off buff rail 100, now we have that lovely continuous buffer. So there are all kinds of things that you can do using PyCharm IDE. This was just a very simple task. If you're working on any Python scripting and you need a hand, just give me a shout. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Comments have been great recently. Please keep it up and subscriptions continue to increase. Makes me very happy and happy mapping.